when I was preparing for these lectures, I was doing some research and I came across a really cool thing called a pitot tube. And I know that my aviation students are gonna know what this is. So a pitot tube, that's what this is supposed to be here, is used to determine the airspeed of an airplane or um, the water speed of a boat. You can do a similar thing. So airspeed is the speed of the aircraft relative to the air. It's a relative velocity. And the pitot tube consists of an outer tube with a number of small holes on the side here that allow air into the tube. And this is connected, this part here, is connected to one end of a manometer. We've already seen manometers, okay? To one end of a U-tube manometer. The other arm of the U-tube here is connected to a hole at the front of the device. This is kind of like a maze, connected to a hole at the front of the device here where the air becomes stagnant. So this device is attached onto an airplane. So I didn't really exaggerate it very well in this image that I drew here, but this part right here is gonna be really long um, out in front of the airplane or underneath the air, some part on the airplane, okay. And so we've got our air moving past this front little tube here. At this point right here in front of the entrance at the end of this pitot tube bit, the air becomes stagnant, stagnant. And by that, we mean that the velocity of the air at that very point equals zero. Okay, why? Well, the fluid, the air is flowing past this long part of the pitot tube, okay? And the air has to go on top and on the bottom. It has to separate and go on either side of the pitot tube. So at this very point of the separation right here, the speed of the wind becomes zero. So right here we could say that the velocity is zero, okay? But then we've got a flow of fluid air on top of the pitot tube and on the bottom of the pitot tube, okay? And so we've got no velocity here, but we've got velocity here. So here, the pressure where the velocity is zero is gonna be greater than the pressure above and below the pitot tube here where we've got these openings here, okay? The pressure is gonna be lower here because we've got the flow of the fluid, the air on either side. And that pressure difference is gonna cause a change in the height of the fluid in the arms of our manometer right here, okay? And so we can calculate what the airspeed is with this pitot tube if we know the height of this column of water on one side of the manometer compared to the other side of the manometer. And we'll just say that our manometer, our U-tube over here is filled with water. Okay, so let's fill in some quantities here. Um, the difference in the liquid level in this U-tube right here, the difference between here and here, my liquid levels in the arms of my manometer is equal to 7.3 centimeters. If our U-tube is filled with water, so the density is water, and the density of, density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, the density of air is 1.25 kilograms per meter cubed. What is the airspeed of the plane, which we'll call V here? What is the airspeed of the plane, the speed of the plane relative to the wind, if all we know is the difference in the fluid height here in our manometer? Okay, so we're gonna use Bernoulli's equation um, essentially twice in order to help us here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use Bernoulli's equation here at what I'm gonna call point two which is the stagnation point right here in front of the pitot tube, and then point one right here, which are these little openings on the side of my pitot tube here. So I'm gonna use Bernoulli's equation between those points. So at point one, the pressure there, plus one half rho, this is air, V squared plus rho G, I'm gonna call it Y1, equals the pressure at point two plus one half rho air, the velocity of the air there at point two 
plus rho g y2. Okay. Bernoulli's equation at point 0.2 and point 0.1. Okay. These quantities must be constant. They have to equal each other on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So relative to our atmosphere, these quantities here, rho g y1 and rho g y2, the difference in height between 0.2 and 0.1 is really the only difference between those two quantities. We can say that relative to our atmosphere, these terms are not going to be very different from each other at all. They're essentially the same. And so I'm just going to say that they would cancel out with each other. And we know at point two here, the speed of our fluid is zero. That's our stagnation point. Okay. So we've got the pressure at point one plus one half rho air V squared. That's the air speed of, of our airplane has to equal P2. Okay, so the pressure has to be greater out here um, because there's no flow of, of fluid. We know that when you have flowing fluid, <laughs> we've got the flowing air, our pressure is reduced, and that's what this equation is saying here. So P2 is greater than P1. I'm going to solve this equation for P2 minus P1. So P2 minus P1 equals 1 half times the density of our air V squared. Okay, and then if I solve this for V, we have that the air speed is going to equal 2 times the difference in pressure between point 0.2 and point 0.1, um, all divided by the density of air, and then we have to square root it. Okay, so that's our magic equation. That's how we can derive the air speed of our plane um, with our pitot tube device. We already know the density of air. We have to find what is the pressure difference um, between point 0.2 and point 0.1 there. That pressure difference is given to us by the difference in height here between the fluid levels in our manometer. So um, this is for the entrance of our pitot tube out here. And now we're going to look at Bernoulli's equation for our manometer over here. And so if I do that, uh, maybe I'll do that over here. Um, we're looking at our manometer right here. And remember we said that for um, our YouTube manometer that the pressure at the same height in the fluid has to be the same. Okay, so um, let's think about this. So the pressure here, P2, okay, all along this little track that I'm drawing here, over to here, everything in that tube, this end of the tube, is at pressure P2, okay? And then, maybe I'll use this different color. Here's P1 at the opening here on the side. And so, huh, this compartment sort of wraps around this other tube. And so everything inside these compartments right here are at pressure P1, and that's over here at this end of um, my manometer here. So everything along that path of the tube is at pressure P1. So when I'm here in my fluid, I can say that this point here and this point here, the pressure in both of those points has to be the same, okay? So the pressure on the left arm of my manometer here has to be P1 plus we've got the column of fluid right here. This column of fluid is exerting a pressure in, additions to P, in addition to P1 of the density of water times G times H. That's the height difference in the fluid layer in our manometer. And that has to equal our pressure over here, which is just P2. So actually, you could derive this from Bernoulli's equation too, but we just sort of got it here by talking through it. Okay, so then we can solve this for P2 minus P1, the thing that we we're looking for over here. So P2 minus P1 is equal to the density of water GH. Okay, and so I can take that and plug it in here for um, my equation for the air speed. Whenever I do that, this is going to equal to 2. And now my pressure difference we saw was the density of water times gravity times the height difference of this water, h, in our U-tube of the manometer. 
divided by the density of air, square root all that. This, all we know, all we need to know, density of air, density of our fluid, doesn't necessarily have to be water, it could be any fluid, and the difference in height, the one end of the manometer versus the other, we can find the air speed, and that's exactly how these pitot tubes work. And so if we plug in everything here, we've got two times the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, times 9.8 meters per second squared, times the difference in height, we're gonna write that as 0 0.073 meters, and then we're gonna divide all of that by the density of air, 1.25 kilograms per meter cubed, and then we have to square root that whole thing, so our air speed turns out to be 3 point, oh, sorry, 33.8 meters per second. These are really important devices for pilots to be able to know how fast their plane is moving. The opening here could get frozen over by water. And if that happens, then you're gonna have a hard time. If you're frozen over here by water, you don't have access to that full pressure difference. You're gonna have an incorrect quantity for um, your airspeed. And that's important for pilots to know how fast they're moving so that they can best direct us to the right route and get us home safely.